Hi guys, welcome back to B&B Farms, where our goal is to try and live with our land and not just on it. Got something a little different on tap today. You can probably see behind me this water wheel. We are at Spring Mill State Park outside of Mitchell, Indiana. We've come to see how, how stuff was done, you know, a couple, couple hundred years ago. We're gonna take a look at this mill. We really enjoy water-powered mills here. Becky and I, it's kind of a, a thing for us. So come along with us. We'll check this village out and we'll show you how this works. Thanks guys, we're glad you're here. Check out this wheel, guys. They just redid it. Uh, it. It opened again this year. Beautiful construction. Iron, and I'm assuming probably white oak. Uh, I will find out what this, what this wheel's made of, but it is gorgeous, and it is a big wheel, too. No joke. Take a look at the outboard bearing end here. You can see that there's no bearing cap on it. It just lays in its saddle. Uh, probably the weight is so great that it doesn't, it doesn't need a bearing cap on top of there. Very cool. You can see the, where the, the, the metal part was driven into this beam. It's got this, these like outriggers on it that go into the axle to support it. So it doesn't really have wood on wood contact where it rotates. You can also see, or I think you can, you can see the, the wedges drove in on the spokes to tighten them up, the wooden wedges. There's a shot of one right there. Very cool. Very cool. Looking forward to seeing this in operation. It's got a grist mill on the inside. So uh, when they get up and running, we're going to go in and check it all out. Yeah, huge flume. PVC in the flume. They just redid the flume also with some trees that come out of McCormick's Creek State Park when a tornado damaged those. They put that trees down here, milled them into lumber, and redid the flume. Very cool. And what really appeals to us is right next door. There is a sawmill over here, also water powered. I think this has a different power source. We'll check that out here in a minute. But what's really unusual about it is it is a reciprocating sawmill. You can see the blade, or I think you can, right there. Yeah, reciprocating. Got a piece of what looks like cedar on the mill right now. Look at this gear that advances the log. You can see the, the pawl that drops down, drops into this gear and rotates the, the log through the blade. I don't know if this will be running today or not, but it is very cool. Very cool. Notice the spokes on this advancer wheel. You know, they could have made those straight, but they didn't. They've got that nice curve, that flourish in them. That's back when craftsmanship meant something. It wasn't just enough to make it utilitarian. It had to look good too. I like that. Check out that bull gear back there, guys. I think it got redone this, this year, too. You can see the axle. That's, that's all new. Again, I'm assuming that's white oak. And here's another inboard bearing. It doesn't have a bearing cap on it. It just sits in the block. Probably the weight is enough to hold it down, just like we talked about on the outside. All those wooden gears, that is amazing.
Check out how smooth that runs, guys. That is, acts like it's balanced really well. It's very quiet. All wooden gearing. a shot of that as we're going to get guys see the buckets and the wheel incorporated them into mills uh, to cut, uh, help cut down on, uh, be more efficient and less labor. Uh, then when they set to restore this in the uh, 1930s, that's what they tried to show here, was the box down here on the end. They would put corn in there. It would fall into the auger, up to the elevator, and I would have kept our hopper full all the time. Uh, we don't use it anymore, it still works. We just don't use it because we, uh, health department says we put anything in it, we have to clean it out every night. So we don't use that part. Uh, Oliver Evans, he, uh, what he done, he put in the auger in the elevator. He also invented what they call a hopper boy. It's a big round vat that would go on the third floor, second and third floor, it would rake the cornmeal or uh, flour, cool it down and rake it to the center so it would come down and go through the other machines they had. Uh, he had patent number three on it, so if you want to look him up, you can look him up. Uh, he wrote a book called The uh, Guide for the Miller and the Millwright. Uh, very interesting book if you're an engineer. I've read part, about half of it and understood very little of it. But, uh, but what's amazing is the uh, terminology and the techniques and the uh, physics that they understood to make a water wheel or a mill to work. So how much water you need, to, how much flow, uh, how big a wheel you need to get the uh, horsepower or, or torque that you need for it. Like this one here puts out about 25 horse, but then it puts out about 25,000 foot-pounds of torque. So you're not going to stop it once it gets going. So uh, what it does, uh, the water goes over. I've had a lot of people uh, come in and want to know where my electric motor is. Because uh, when it's freewheeling, if you go under and look, there's very little water. And they think I've got something else to power. All we got is water. So uh, when I start it up, it's going to turn the water wheel, this main shaft, all the gears. There's five more gears in the basement, and it's going to turn the upper stone here. And all together, the weight of that is about 22,000 pounds. So that's what we're going to turn with the water here in a second. So uh, how do we get it to, to work? Water comes down to the hammer cave, comes down the flume, comes down, there's a sluice gate up in front of the water wheel. Uh, we control that with a lever back here on the wall. Open up the gate, water goes over the water wheel, turns these gears, uh, goes down in the basement, comes up through and uh, turns my upper stone. There's two stones. The mid stone or bottom stone does not turn. Uh, the upper stone turns corn in the hopper. The corn falls into what they call a shoe. As that shoe vibrates on that shaft coming up from the basement, it vibrates the corn down. I can regulate that corn by adjusting my cook strain. Uh, there is no basic speed control on it. Give it more or less water, which is hard to regulate. But if you hear it speeding up, uh, you can give it uh, more corn to slow it down or vice versa. So you can actually use that to control a little bit of the speed of your gears and your stones. Uh, the corn comes out the front here. It will do 600 pounds an hour. So it will put out some cornmeal. We grind for about a minute or two. Uh, this gear here in the front, 
Uh, what it is, it's a tenery gear. What that does, it raises and lowers my upper stone. That's how I adjust my grind. I can make it finer. I can make it coarser just by adjusting my stone. We have it at four turns right now. So that when it takes off, there's less stress on the gears, my stone. And uh, as soon as it gets going, I'll crank her down the board, and that's where we grind that. So, any questions? We'll fire it up here and uh, grind a little corn. Make sure I got everything in order. Make sure nobody's standing out there that don't want to get wet. Some more corn into it at the end. But when it starts slowing down, it don't vibrate enough corn down to keep my stones separated. You guys see that flume there behind me? We're going to walk up this trail right here and see what the source of the water is that drives that wheel. Let's take a look. All right, you can see the creek, see a waterfall up there. I think we're going to find the beginning of this water source here in just a minute. Gonna get kind of noisy here. There's the mill pond. You can see the flume that runs right back down the hill to the mill. Absolutely gorgeous spot. Let's go on up. All right, guys, here's what we came to see. The source of the water for the grist mill at Spring Mill State Park. It's a cave. That water flows out of this cave. This is the actual, you know, the, the headwaters, the beginning of this stream. You can feel the cold air coming out of that of that underground store, it feels great. Another shot of the mill pond. Very unique having a cave supply the water. Guys, I don't know how well that's going to show up. I wanted to get a, a shot of the, the turbine wheel that runs this sawmill. Uh, you can see the flume that brings water down to it. Get some cast iron piping there that runs over to it, as well as the mechanisms to open and close the valves. Uh, shaft runs underneath the floor and then connects to the sawmill back here. Very, very cool. I don't know that we're going to get to see that run today. Uh, it ran yesterday, of course, when we weren't here. But uh, I don't know, we can hope. If not, maybe we can make another trip down here and see that sawmill run. Another shot of that impressive overshot water wheel. That is a 24 foot diameter wheel. Just a 
marvel of, of engineering. 24 foot diameter overshot water wheel. Wow. Well guys, I think that's gonna wrap this video up. We hope you enjoyed this little side trip, this little diversion from our usual content. Like I said, Becky and I love visiting old mills and we've really enjoyed our day here at Spring Mill State Park. In closing, remember the drill guys, be nice to one another, get outside and enjoy what's around you. And if you know of any, any water wheels in your area, drop us a line in the comments. We'd love to go check them out. Thanks guys, I'll see you on the next video.